<laughs> That's a joke. How could I know secret enlightenment? I really don't. I can remember saying to myself when I was 20, when I'm 30, I'm sure I'll know what this is all about. And when I'm 30, maybe when I'm 50, I'll know. And now I'm 67, 60, I think I'm 67. And I think I'm still in the dark. And when I've spoken to my mother about this, she says, as you get to the later years, you actually know less <laughs> because you, you start to get a bit of senile dementia and stuff like this. And it's all lost. It's all gone. It's all disintegrating. It's all gone. And what was this about? You just have to let it go because you do not know and you will never know. When I was younger, I was very much a perfectionist in my work and in everything I did. If you're going to do something, you do it 100%, do it perfectly. I've realized that that tightness, that perfection, is actually a problem because it doesn't allow me to move and be who I am. So I've been trying to loosen up and letting go. I came across this wonderful poem and it's called She Let Go and it's by Sapphire Rose. Without a thought, or a word, she let go. She let go of the fear. She let go of the judgment. She let go of the confluence of opinions swarming around her head. She let go of the committee of indecision within her. She let go of all the right reasons, wholly and completely, without hesitation or worry, she let go. a voice that's always in my head. That voice that says, what do you think you're doing? Oh, you're just fooling around here. This isn't worth anything. The inner critic's voice tends to be somebody who's been in an authoritarian role with you. For me, it's often my mother. My mother is a very strong personality. Quite a critical person, not one for giving compliments out very easily. this criticism, you know, that you're not getting things right, that you, you're not quite getting there, you know, you're just not quite good enough. critic just comes slyly through the door there. I'll be working and I suddenly say, hmm, that doesn't look like much, does it? Then I have to make a conscious effort of saying, no, 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 that's enough. I've heard enough.
I've got this painting that I made because I got so angry one day with this chirping that was going on in my ear. I wanted to shut it up, so I actually stitched that mouth closed so that it can't open again. I don't want to give it the time of day. I don't want it to absorb me. I can remember when I first saw Venus of Willendorf. A stone little sculpture of a woman, a very voluptuous woman. She's got the enormous watermelon breasts and enormous tummy and she's big bottom and short legs and actually a bit like me. <laughs> been at odds with my body all my life. But maybe by making those little Venuses, I'm trying to find an acceptance there. I'm trying to find an acceptance. And maybe what I need to do is to actually whip my clothes off and sit in front of a mirror and actually paint myself. And try not to be disgusted and revolted by it because that's how that's what that voice is saying. And that's not how the people who love me think about me. They don't. It's me. It's my own inner critic that's doing all this harmful stuff. And I just want to stuff a pillow in its mouth and shut it up because it just spoils everything. I need to find my own peace in that. You know, I really do. Lawrence loves me no matter what. I can be fat, I can be thin, but he just loves me and he always will. And I know that. And that is a, a huge liberation for me. I've said to him, how can you bear to see me in the nude? How can you bear to see me changing for my shower and everything? He says, what, it's just you, it's just fine. You're absolutely beautiful, you're lovely. You know, and it's genuine, it's genuine. So how can I argue with that, you know? <laughs> I shouldn't. I should just love myself more. And I think most of us have the biggest struggle is loving, loving oneself and being kind to oneself. You've got to get to a place where you, I must be enough. This is enough. Surely it's enough. Enough for me is being in this moment. There's a calmness and a peacefulness inside of you that is enough. It's just like when you've been inside for a long time and you go and sit out in the sun, that seeping warmth and that absolute pleasure It's something deep and strong and moving and warm and I think letting go is just, uh, it's being in the river, it's being in that time, it's lovely, it's lovely.
Like a leaf falling from a tree, she just let go. There was no effort, there was no struggle. It wasn't good and it wasn't bad. It was what it was, and it is just that. In the space of letting go, she let it all be. A small smile came over her face. A light breeze blew through her, and the sun and the moon shone forevermore. Thanks for watching our film. Every story we've made is possible thanks to the support of our patrons. And if you'd like to continue to support us to make stories that explore the infinite beauty of being human, sign up on Patreon. Thanks. <laughs>